presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook and the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison door wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all of his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Ordinarily in these weekly homilies, I comment on the gospel, but I simply love this story from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, and I wanted to spend some time reflecting on it with you. A number of years ago, I had the opportunity to lead a pilgrimage to Greece, and one of the spots that we visited was Philippi. And they've done some excavations in the area, and they found the marketplace. And close to the marketplace in Philippi is the jail that, as far as archaeologists can, can determine, is the actual site where Paul and Silas were imprisoned, as it's recounted in today's reading. Now, I learned that earthquakes in that area are actually quite common. So there's nothing necessarily miraculous about the fact that the earthquake struck and was so severe that it shook all of the doors of the prison open. Not necessarily miraculous. I think the miracle here is actually the way in which Paul and Silas reacted to the circumstances of their life. So you recall that Paul was invited when he was over in Turkey, Asia Minor. He had a vision of a Macedonian, a Greek, inviting him to come over to Europe. And this marked the movement of the gospel moving from Asia into Europe. And initially, they were met with great success. We heard earlier in the Acts of the Apostles the story of Lydia, an influential woman who received the gospel and uh, was baptized and helped Paul and Silas to spread the word. 
Well, this is a very different experience, isn't it, in Philippi, where the magistrates are so incensed at Paul and Silas proclaiming this belief in the Lord Jesus that they ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods and then thrown into prison and, and, and kept secure. The jailer obviously took his responsibility very seriously and put them in the inmost prison and just to be extra safe, staked them in the ground so there was no getting away. But did you catch how Paul and Silas reacted to their beatings, to their imprisonment, and to their being staked in the ground? They weren't simply licking their, their wounds and feeling sorry for themselves or cursing God or wondering why this had happened or shouting insults. No, the Acts of the Apostles said that they were singing songs and hymns, not only encouraging themselves, but witnessing to the other prisoners in the jail. What an extraordinary experience of the Holy Spirit residing within them. When we can experience hardships and difficulties and not see ourselves as abandoned by God, but experiencing some share of the sufferings of Christ, at that moment, if we can react in the way that Paul and Silas react, then we know that the Spirit of God is abiding within us. The story goes on. The earthquake happens, and the doors of the prison are flung open, and the stakes are, are released. And the guard, assuming that the prisoners had run out, takes his sword and is going to kill himself because he had failed in his duty to keep the prisoners severely locked up. But Paul, as you heard, shouts out, do no harm to yourself. That, sh that shook this hardened guard to the core. The kindness would be shown to him. What was it in the experience of the early Christian community that caused the gospel to spread like wildfire through the ancient world. Part of it was the power of the kerygma, the power of the proclamation of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But even more fundamentally, it was the witness and the way in which the early Christian community lived the way they loved one another, the way they showed kindness and compassion even to their enemies, the way in which they lived the gospel of Jesus, who said, love one another, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And here we have it in spades, Paul and Silas in prison, having just been beaten, and they're praising God and witnessing to their fellow prisoners. And when that kindness is shown to the guard, he's cut to the quick. And so he asks the question, what do I need to be saved? And the door of his heart, which had been severely locked at that moment, is flung open. And Paul and Silas can witness to him of the power of the gospel. He takes that message in bathes the wounds of the prisoners, offers them a meal. And not only he, but his entire household are baptized and rejoice in the promise of Jesus' love. This is just an extraordinary story. As I said, uh, this, this story uh, just so deeply touches my heart because I had the opportunity to go there to stand in the prison where this took place. Now, some of you know that I, I, I love sci-fi, Star Trek and Star Wars and the Marvel comic series. I, I love all of, the, all of that stuff. But that is not this. This is the history of our faith. This actually took place. And if you ever have the opportunity to go to Greece and go to Philippi, you can see the place that is described here where this miracle took place. Not the miracle 
of the earthquake, but the miracle of the conversion of this guard whose heart was hardened by the witness, not just the words of Paul and Silas, but their actions. This is what we need today, is to let the light of Christ shine forth in our actions of how we love the members of our own household and how we love those who think differently than us, those who actively persecute us, those who speak ill against us. If we can witness to the presence of Christ's love, even in the midst of persecution and hardship, that's, that's the power of the gospel that can shake open the chains around our hearts and the hearts of so many around us. Everyone acknowledges that we are a divided nation, we are a divided world, and we have so many tension points right, right now. Let today's story encourage us in the midst of our hardships and difficulties to continue to praise and witness to what Jesus has done for us in his great mercy. Amen? Amen. Heart.